What's up guys, welcome back to Airbnb ABCs. Buying your first short-term rental and listing it on Airbnb and VRBO can be a very, very overwhelming process. I mean, you gotta know where you're gonna go, what kind of property it's gonna be, get financing, find one, close on it, put all your systems together, write all of your automated messages, list it, deal with guests before you even get that first payout. And you're gonna be putting out tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars and taking on mortgages of probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. And so just getting started can be a major undertaking. Now I've had a couple friends lately that have asked me about getting into this and one of them actually has, and they've asked me these same questions. So I figured let's go ahead and put these things down in a video because what we're gonna talk about today is just the process of buying your first Airbnb short-term rental. We're gonna take this one step at a time. We're only going to talk about that today. And we'll do another video later on about how to set up your systems and then how to host your first guest. And so if you guys don't mind, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button to help this video out. Uh, hoping to get to a thousand subscribers real soon and we're gonna get right into it. The first thing and the very most important thing that you're gonna do in this whole thing, and this is going to make or break you, is identifying the market that you want to be in. The biggest thing about this is a lot of times folks Will, will look at markets where they necessarily like going on vacation. And there's nothing wrong with that. The places where I've bought cabins in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park area is one of my favorite places to go on vacations. It also happens to be one of the top short-term rental markets in the United States, possibly worldwide for all I know. But what I do know is that it rents very well, the revenue is good, and the regulations related to that are very much in favor of the short-term rental host. So those are some of the things that you wanna look at. The revenue being one of the big ones, uh, and the seasonality being another one of the big ones, because you can make $100,000 in a property over 12 months, or you might only make $100,000 in a property in five to six, seven months if you're at like a beach market versus a mountain market where people tend to come more year round. So you need to know what your revenue numbers are. You need to know what the seasonality of the market that you're looking for is. And you need to know what the laws and regulations are for short-term rentals both now and what's coming down the pike in the future. The reason that I like the Smoky Mountains and I like the uh, Florida Gulf Coast is because there is a very high level of revenue. The seasonality, especially in the Smoky Mountains, is almost not an issue other than January and February, a little slow, but you still make money during those months. And then the beach markets are very predictable with you know a, a, a Labor Day to Memorial Day type of thing as far as your season goes. But the laws and the uh, regulations are extremely favorable. The reason that that is, is because this has been a short-term rental market before Airbnb, before VRBO, especially in the Smokies, going back to the 30s and 40s. The entire area's economy and everyone's jobs are pretty much wrapped up in this short-term rental market. There have been uh, tons of news stories coming out about markets that they have tried to cut down on the amount of short-term rentals. I believe Sacramento, Atlanta, places in uh, the Northeast where they're not typically short-term rental markets and these are starting to become a problem for the locals, for the housing, for police and such. And these are just not issues that you're going to have to deal with in any of these major vacation markets that are dependent on short-term rentals to make their economy. The other thing that you really wanna look at is, is this a destination? Are people coming from low large areas to come to these places. We are, in the Smoky Mountains, we are at least getting the eastern half of the United States regularly coming to the Smoky Mountains. But we still get folks from far out west and the people get uh, guests from even internationally to come to the Smoky Mountains versus maybe your local lake market, maybe some sort of state park or something that has kind of a niche following but isn't drawing in millions or possibly even billions of people from uh, different parts of the country or even around the world. So one of the things that I like to look for to kind of identify these markets, if it's a big market or not, is if they have owners and guest Facebook groups. And if they have like Facebook groups for the local cleaners in the area, for the handymen and things like that. Because if those groups exist, there's at least a large enough a portion of the population that is owning there and traveling there for these things to exist and thrive. And I've always found that to be kind of a good benchmark if it's a uh, very desirable short-term rental destination area. So once you've 
identify the market that you want to be in. The next two things you're going to do are, you can kind of do them at the same time, but we'll talk about them you know, in this order. You want to get a lender. This is not going to be your local bank. It's probably not going to be a giant national bank either. What you're going to look for is a lender that deals in short-term rentals because the way that these work are much different than a typical real estate transaction. If you're buying a home, there are they are being rented currently. They probably have bookings going out months in the future, and you're going to need to be able to get in and out of these fairly quickly to do inspections, to do appraisals, to do anything that you might need to do. And the first one that we did was with a large national lender that I had a business relationship with. And although we did close the loan, it was sort of difficult to get everything done because that lender did not understand the way that the market that we were buying and operated in how we had to get like the appraisal done. That was one of our big hangups. So make sure you're looking at a lender who does short-term rentals. The folks that we have used for this that have worked very well are a Movement Mortgage and the uh, the Mortgage Shop is another one that I've heard of that does very well. I haven't used them, but those folks only deal in short-term rental loans. When you get your lender, you're going to be able, to, they are going to be able to give you what your budget is based on your income, based on your debts, based on the loan type that you are taking. They will be able to tell you that uh, what kind of loans that they have, what they can offer you if you're going to do a 10% down second home loan. Know that there's some stipulations that go along with that, that you actually have to have the intent to use it as a second home occasionally. There are 15% and 20% down conforming investment loans. There are debt service coverage ratio loans, but your lender is going to be able to tell you what is going to work for you, what might be the best for you, what is available for, for you, depending on how much the that you make, your debts, and the amount of uh, revenue that you expect this to make, and if you are gonna be able to use that revenue in addition to all the other things in order to qualify. Before you go looking at houses, you are going to need to be pre-qualified, and so stopping off at a lender and getting pre-approved is one of the first steps to buying that short-term rental property. The second part of this is getting a realtor, and you guys are gonna find that a lot of this is very similar to purchasing a regular home, but there are just a couple little nuances that are gonna make your life a heck of a lot easier if you listen to this advice and you know go out and get these specific people that that work in these specific niches of real estate. You are not going to want Debbie who's been slinging real estate since the 70s uh, that still works on paper, that still wants to show you every house. You are going to want to find a realtor that specializes in the short-term rental market. It's a completely different market than uh, primary residence. It's a completely different market than long-term rentals. And a lot of those folks are not going to understand the differences uh, between short-term rental and everything else. You want someone who knows the area and the regulations because, again, these can vary dramatically just from city to city. I know that at one point, Las Vegas did not allow short-term rentals, but the adjacent cities and counties around there did. So if you were working with someone that was only familiar with Las Vegas but worked in the adjacent counties as well, they might tell you that short-term rentals were illegal when, in fact, they may or may not have been. I don't, I'm not terribly familiar with the Las Vegas market, but I know that that's something that was going on out there. They can tell you if your budget that you got a pre-approved for from your lender is going to work at all in the market. And you might have been thinking that three or 400,000 was gonna get it done. You go down to the Smokies and find out a two bedroom cabin is gonna cost you north of $500,000 easily. So you may have to adjust where you're going. You may have to just, you know, save up more money or get, uh, uh, you know, for a larger down payment so that you can afford that based on what you're qualified for. Your realtor is probably going to be one of the folks that can also make and break this if you are not familiar with real estate, if you are not familiar with that market at all. For example, there's a lot of folks that come from California and New York that invest in the Smokies that have never been there. And so the realtor is a very valuable uh, person. The biggest part about this is that they can oftentimes connect you with some connections for cleaners, for handy people, for all sorts of contractors, your inspectors that are good in that area, uh, septic inspectors, all sorts of folks that you may need right away before you have a lay of the land. They can likely get you those people or they know who to ask to get you those people. I am not affiliated with these folks and uh, you know I'm not sponsored by them, but I use the Short Term Shop uh, Realty Group. They have been fabulous with us and the best thing is that they have a large online community that is extremely helpful for new and experienced investors alike uh, it's you know it's not there's there's no um agenda or anything like that it's just uh, other short-term rental investors helping other people that's all they do they do not deal in long-term or primary residences so if you're looking for a realtor 
I can highly recommend that particular brokerage. So once you've got your market, you've got your lender, you're pre-approved, you've got your realtor, they know what it is that you're looking for, and they've said that you know your budget can probably work in the area that you're looking for, you need to identify the type of property that you wanna buy. Again, this is where your realtor is gonna be able to help you out in a big way, and if you guys have done your due diligence on the front end, you probably have a pretty good idea about what kind of property that you wanna buy anyway. But if you don't, you need to look at the market. You need to get on Airbnb, VRBO, and see what is the most popular rentals in that area. You have to see what rents. You have to see where it rents. Just because you put the type of house that rents in one area and you move it 20 miles to the you know any direction doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to rent as well or even good at all as the one that is right in the center of the action, or it may even rent better 20 miles away where they can commute into the center of the action and be secluded. These are all things that I've learned from being in the Smokies market that you can do either and be successful. But always location, location, location. That is the you know mantra of real estate. And you can have a beautiful cabin overlooking a garbage dump and you know it's probably not going to rent very well. You need to look at what your peers are able to rent their place for because you know when you start looking at dollar amounts, you can kind of, you know, break it down based on what the interest rates are right now, what your mortgage is going to be. You can estimate utilities, you can estimate lawn care, cable, electricity, gas, water, sewer, whatever. And you can come up with an idea about what you are going to have to spend monthly in order just to keep this place running. And then you can look at what other folks are charging for their cleaning fees and pretty much anything you can use. Uh, comparables in order to you know figure out how much you think that you are going to be able to rent it for and you want to look at all throughout the season you want to look at weekdays and weekends in january february uh the spring break season the summer season the fall season if that's a big season the smokies it is because we have the leaves and people like to come down and see that and then over the thanksgiving christmas season and, it, and all this is going to uh, dramatically vary based on your location beach markets are going to just be gangbusters in the summer. They're going to be hauling out their uh, their profits in dump trucks. Whereas the like Smokies and mountain markets typically have a much longer, wider season with the summers being higher, the winters being lower, with the exception of Thanksgiving through uh, New Year's or so. And, you know, but you need to look and see what your annual revenue probably is going to look like. You need to see if there is room to outdo your competition. If there is a bunch of houses and in it's, in it's, there's lots of rentals around, but they're all not great. They're all managed by terrible property management companies. They don't have good photos. They're all out of date. It's just, you know, just crappy rentals. That's an area where you can look at and say, I can stand out. I can come in with a very updated modern cabin or updated modern beach house, and we can put very good professional photos on it. We can manage this ourselves much better than a property manager would make more money, keep more of it for ourselves, keep it in better shape, and we will be able to outdo the competition. And so just because another property might only be bringing in $60,000 a year, you may be able to do 70, 80, 90, $100,000 a year because you are better at managing it, you're better at marketing it, and it's just a better property altogether. But that is what you're gonna to have to do to ID the type of a house that you're gonna that you're going to purchase, the type of property, condo, whatever, and be sure that it's going to make the amount of money that you think that it's going to be able to make with wiggle room in case things don't go as well as you thought, or hopefully go much better than you could have ever imagined. The last thing on this chain of events from you know having a million things to do to getting to a property that is now yours is you need to get out there and you need to make offers. Now, when we started out in this, we were in one of the most competitive times ever. Properties would come on and off the market in the matter of minutes. We were the first buyer on the first one that we bought. It had been on the market for 30 minutes when we locked it down for 525,000 sight unseen. And there is oftentimes you are going to have to do that in these hot markets. There you are literally in the big leagues, you are bidding against people from all over the country, from all over the world, and you may have to make offers sight unseen. So you need to be sure that you know what it is by talking to your realtor of how you are able to get out of these if the inspection doesn't go well. This sight unseen offer thing is not as bad as it was before. You may get the chance to drive to those areas, look at those areas before making offers on those properties, 
but the chances of your realtor still being able to go out and show you a bunch of stuff probably isn't in the cards. And I know that that's probably very odd for folks out there, but it's just the, the nature of this market. And there's really not a lot more that I can say about that. Once you get something under contract, you are going to need to do your typical inspections like you would with any given a real estate transaction. The thing is, is that there's going to be more here than your traditional home. When you're looking at your traditional home, you're looking at, you know, is the roof okay? Is the electric panel okay? Is the plumbing okay? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you're buying a vacation rental, oftentimes these will come completely furnished. Uh, be if that's good or bad is, uh, you know, kind of depending on what you're getting into because we've bought ones where we've kept nearly all the furniture because it was in very good shape. There's other ones that we've thrown out nearly all the furniture, replaced it all because it was not in good shape, but we had a fantastic value add on that particular cabin. So you're gonna to need to look at for things like, am I gonna to need to buy a couch? Am I gonna to need to buy mattresses? Am I gonna to need to buy silverware, cups, plates? Now, what's the hot tub look like? What does all of this stuff that you are going to be buying immediately, the TVs, arcade games, pool tables, air hockey, all of those things you need to put in, you need to look at in your inspection, not necessarily to try to get the buyer to pay for those. You know, obviously if there's building problems, but just that you are running through all of the things that you're going to need to get your property on the market to be as marketable as possible and to get on the market as fast as possible when you're done. So you can pre-order this stuff, get it ready to go for when you have closed. So once you guys are through all of that, you've done all your inspections and stuff, you guys can close on the property. You can write the big checks, you can sign a million pieces of paper and you can move on. You can look for insurance, utilities, things like that. Go to those Facebook owners groups that I had uh, uh, previously mentioned when you're looking for your market or if you're working with a short-term shop uh, agent, you can get access to that awesome short-term uh, shop buyers club mind trust that just has a slew of information on these very popular markets where I am very active in it. Uh, other YouTubers I know of are active in it that are you know Airbnb YouTubers. They can give you recommendations on who to go to for insurance, who to go to for different utilities. If there is not traditional internet available in your area, who are the non-traditional internet providers. But that is all stuff that you guys can do once that, once you are cleared to close, you can start banging that stuff out, getting it ready. And then after all of those things, after you've done all of this stuff, getting to the, getting the acquisition of the property all done, that is when you can move on to looking at what property management software you're gonna use, actually creating your listings on Airbnb, VRBO, booking.com if you wanna use that. Everything else that comes after buying the property. And that's the way that you got to handle this when it's super overwhelming with your first one or your second one or your third one. It, it, it's still in a lot of ways overwhelming. Just break it down one piece at a time and you know get through each step without losing your mind. Click on the videos that are on the screen right now. They're going to tell you guys all about the types of properties that we buy, how we manage them from afar, the trials and tribulations of running a short-term rental business because it's not all you know rainbows and unicorn farts and making money and such. I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe down below, hit the like button on this video. I'll see you in the next one.